All right, in case you're suffering from amnesia or Kamala wants you to, and you're forgetting how great the economy was back in 2019, well, today Trump reminded us that inflation was low, unemployment was low, and the border was being enforced. And he can do it all again. We will bring back the American dream bigger, better, and stronger than ever before. Sounds good to me, and he's going to cut taxes. We're cutting the business tax from 21 percent to 15 percent, which makes us the most competitive tax anywhere on the planet, but only for those who make their product in the USA. See, that's an incentive. Under Trump, the economy will grow, and the U.S. will become, once again, a manufacturing hub. This new American industrialism will create millions and millions of jobs, massively raise wages for American workers, and make the United States into a manufacturing powerhouse like it used to be many years ago. And he's going to name a new ambassador who is responsible for helping to bring those jobs back from overseas. To exploit these pro-manufacturing policies, their full potential is going to happen. It's going to happen very quickly. I will appoint a manufacturing ambassador whose sole task, and it'll be a great one, will be to go around the world and convince major manufacturers to pack up and move back to America. Now, those are just some of the things that he pledged to do. It was very specific about them. But what about Kamala's specifics? I get that she's from a middle-class family. It's great. Uh, and I get that she feels people's pains, great, but what about, like, here are the five things I'm going to do directly for you. Does she need to, be, need to be doing more of that? People like to have a connection to whoever is running for office, that they share their experience, that they understand uh, their lives, and I think that's what she is establishing. Wait a second. She actually said her policy is a connection. Joining us now, Florida Congresswoman Anna Paulina Luna. Congresswoman, great to see you tonight. So Americans who are having trouble paying their bills, paying their rent, paying their health care costs, are just happy to have a connection with Kamala, I guess because she worked at McDonald's. Really? I mean, it just, just goes to show how disconnected these people are. You know, Nancy Pelosi is not going to tell you that violent crimes are up 61 percent and women are largely the target. And so when I hear that type of rhetoric, all I can say is the number one issue I'm hearing from my voters is what's happening at the border and what's happening with inflation. And people want a Trump economy. They want him back in office. Well, he also, President Trump, had a message for the auto workers in Michigan today. Let's look at this. To the auto workers in Michigan, Georgia, and all other parts of our country, I am pinpointing you for greatness. Your industry has been decimated by many decades of incompetent leadership, both political and at your company level. But we're going to turn it around, and we're going to turn it around fast. Congresswoman, what will Kamala Harris do herself for the auto industry rather than, I mean, other than, I should say, mandating EVs? <laughs> Frankly, uh, I really haven't heard much of her policy positions except for her laughing. What I can also tell you is that, as far as I know, she's not going to be bringing those jobs back. And as you just stated earlier, they're massively uh, pushing these EVs, and that's all only benefiting their large donors here in Washington, D.C., that own these corporations that are giving to their campaign. So I don't think it's going to be much for the American people. But good news is that we're polling ahead, and we need people to show up to the polls, vote early, vote in person, and we're going to bring home the win this November. Yeah, there's some good numbers out today uh, in the Quinnipiac poll, a few others. Others show it, you know, she might have a lead here or there. But you know, we were led to believe, I think the electorate, we're led to believe that, you know, Tr Trump was losing steam, the enthusiasm gap was favoring Kamala Harris. But what we're really finding is after that debate, Americans still are having trouble paying their bills, are still worried about the border, and they're still not thrilled that we're shoveling all this money out to Ukraine. I don't think any of that's changed because of a debate. No, not at all. And in fact, I think Zelensky showing up to campaign for Kamala. I mean, do the American people really want to continue supporting Ukraine's pensions? I don't think so. You know, I was with just with President Trump over the weekend. And what I can tell you is he is working so hard for the American people. He has a massive amount, especially of women's support. You know, I was in North Carolina and the amount of women showing up that want safety, want protection, want a leader like President Trump that will help fight a lot of this uh, violence that we're seeing with a lot of these illegals coming here. I mean, it's, it's just going to continue to Election Day. So we're going to help him bring home this win. Um, speaking of the speech that he gave in North Carolina, 
This comment is making a lot of waves from some of the um, feminists out there. Let's watch. I make this statement to the great women of our country. Sadly, women are poorer than they were four years ago, are less safe on the streets than they were four years ago. I will fix all of that because I am your protector. I want to be your protector. Now, Congresswoman, uh, the left-wing media have been attacking him for that. Um, do women hate hearing a man say, I want to be your protector? And uh, No women I know are offended no. by that, but apparently someone <laughs> in the media is, and I guess the Democrats are. No, not at all. And in fact, again, I'll go back to just some of the things I was hearing over the weekend. You know, when you have violent crime up 61 percent, rape up over 40 percent because of what happened with Kamala Harris's open borders and her being a border czar. And then you have the left wing media. Let, let's make no mistake. The left wing media is a propaganda arm of the DNC that's attempting to erase her record on border security because they know the number one most targeted demographic for this is American women that have been hurt the most by her policies. And then they're going to see to demonize a man like Trump who put women in positions of power and authority. Look, I've known President Trump personally over the last four years, and what I can tell you is he's done great things for this country, but more importantly, he is right. Americans are having trouble, especially paying for groceries. Women are largely being impacted, not just physically from crime, but also, too, in our pocketbooks. And I hope that many Americans join us in voting for him this November. Well, if you like the status quo, if you like the way things are, you should vote for Kamala Harris. If you want things to change and get better, you got to vote for Trump. It's really that simple. Congresswoman, thank yeah. you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.